I often receive questions from hunters throughout the Whitetails range asking where they should place stands or blinds. When it comes to picking hunting locations, no matter the habitat types, pinch points are key to getting deer within range. When hunting in large stands of timber, I look for naturally occurring pinch points. This may be a saddle in a ridge, where a creek makes a bow, or an oak flat that's producing more acorns than other areas. There's a hill over here, this deep ravine down here. Deer kind of come through this area right here. So we're in that little patch of woods, it's kind of a travel corridor. Now this drill acts as a bottleneck or a pinch point. You want to be in between bedding areas on pinch points like this where bucks are going to be running. Two food pots right up here, so it's a pinch point or a travel corridor, big time. Clay, Daniel, and I have been out scouting this morning and we have found a great location for a stand. We found an old scrape over here just a little bit while we were scouting this area and bucks are going to bottleneck right around this really steep ditch. So we actually have a pinch point that forces deer for a hundred or more yards right in an area. And that's critical when you're hunting in big timber. Sometimes what makes a pinch point can be a bit unusual. The coolest I've ever seen was last year when I was working in New York on Mr. Gross's property. There were many hand stacked rock walls throughout a big portion of Mr. Gross's property. And these walls dated back more than a hundred years. We're still working Matt's property and he's got all these beautiful old stone walls on his property. They're just gorgeous. But what they are also is a tremendous hunting opportunity because, of course, we all like bottlenecks, right? We're bow hunters, gun hunters, we want to find a bottleneck. Well, we found a little deer trail in the woods. It's tough to see through the leaves and the green this time of year. And this trail leads right to a little spot where the wall is falling down. Look at this, folks. We got a pretty intimidating wall. We got a break, an obvious trail right beside the tree. And another wall that crosses into another wall. I mean, this is like the ultimate pinch point right here. Settlers had built these walls to contain livestock or to keep livestock out of their crops. Through time, those fields have been abandoned and grown up with trees. However, the walls were still intact, and so were the openings that settlers made to get into their pastures and fields. And deer were using those openings to move through that section of property. The walls had been there so long, deer were conditioned to moving through the gaps without fear. And we're in the process of reclaiming some of those fields, converting them to food plots, and this will be an outstanding hunting location. Pinch points can be created on any property to increase the odds of getting a buck within bow range, and you don't have to stack up large rock walls. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconix, Eagle Seed, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Morel Targets, Hoyman, Hooks Custom Calls, Summit Tree Stands, RTP Outdoors, Yamaha, Fourth Arrow, Onyx Hunt, Scorpion Venom Archery, Bloodsport Arrows, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Our friend John Escobar recently purchased 165 acres in southeastern Kansas. Looking at a map of John's property using Onyx, it was obvious there were already some good pinch points. Those points were made by the way the creek laid, the ag fields, and one ag field in relation to the other. There were some skinny woodlots in between those structures that were obvious deer travel corridors. The western half of John's property was a different story. It was almost contiguous cover. 
Looking at the properties to the east and west of John's farm, it was either a large ag field or cattle pasture, and it was clear John's farm was the largest block of cover in the area. Clay and I recently traveled to John's farm and spent the day touring the property. Our objective was to make it better hunting for John and his son by creating some pinch points in the western half of the property. I really enjoyed touring the eastern half of John's property. The obvious bottlenecks were just as true in person as they had been on a map and John had his stands in good locations. But to utilize the whole property, we wanted to cross the creek and see the western half. And once we got there, it was a solid block of cover with lots of trails everywhere, but it was very difficult to predict which trail deer would be using. Working in Eastern Kansas today with John, and John actually lives about 30 minutes from me, but we met over here in Kansas, and he's got a great property. It's not a large property as far as acres go, but it's loaded with deer. There are trails, tracks, rubs everywhere. So we're early in the tour, but I already know I'm gonna be working on making bottlenecks or pinch points so John and his son can pattern deer better, get them within bow range, and we're definitely gonna change the ag program, there's a couple of fields here that have been leased out to a farmer and I want to change that to provide food year round. We saw some deer while walking through the western half and I'd think, oh, they're on a primary trail. And I'd get up there and there'd be sign, walk another 10 or 20 or 30 yards, there'd be another trail. It was a maze of deer sign and you're thinking, well that's great, just hang a stand anywhere. But if you do that, hunters often get winded or alert deer before they see the deer. I mean, it seems like every 10 to 20 yards there's a trail in here, literally. Yeah. So we gotta bottleneck them because it would be really hard to pick which trail right now. So I'm still thinking about ways to create some pinch points or bottlenecks in here. So there's Honax, I think. Yep, yep. Several, several options in here. One would be to create a longer, skinnier food plot through here to bottleneck deer around either side. You know, but I, again, I want to look at the map for, you know, so I reserve the right to change my mind once I get it all taken in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep exploring. I'm learning. After walking the western half of John's property, not only looking at the topography, but several other features, I decided a series of food plots specifically designed would increase the huntability of that side of property in several ways. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking some long, like right here, long linear food plots that are fairly hefty, and then leave a little bottleneck in here and then another food plot here, mm -hmm. okay? and probably one in here, so now I got a bottleneck here, a bottleneck here, and a bottleneck here. Yeah. First, it would add more food to the property, which would be a great attractant once the crop field to the west had been harvested. Rather than simply lay out a large food plot, I worked with the lay of the land and come up with a series of food plots that would use the features of the land to encourage deer to travel between the food plots huge bottleneck here in a little drain coming up. It's not a steep drain, but deer would want to travel that anyway. And that ties right into this. Mm -hmm. And that's not that many yards across there. And then we got the river in the edge of this plot here, making another bottleneck. We walk along part of that. I've got this pinched down smaller here and widening out for a reason, because that ties into this up here. Mm -hmm. This ties in to the bottleneck going this way. So when you really start thinking about it, there's a lot of magic happening yeah. here. This is the largest block of cover in the area, and I did not want to disturb the entire block. So I left a buffer of cover between the ag field and where I would start laying out food plots. So there'd be a large block of undisturbed cover so deer would be very comfortable residing on the property. John's primarily a bow hunter, so the gaps between the plots were designed that deer passing through there would likely be within range. When we talk frequently and we're walking around and there's a trail every 10, 20, 30 yards or whatever, mm -hmm. you condense that down to going through there. 
You know how many deer are going to be? So if you blow this up, you can see I actually left a little opening there because I wanted it wide enough that the bucks were comfortable going through there. Yeah. And we're just going to let that grow up in a little brush and stuff. Of course, John and his son can also hunt the food plots when mature bucks are targeting those sources of quality forage. The plots were also designed based around John's current access points so he could approach, hunt, and exit without alerting deer. And you're just staying out of here, except you're gonna mulch a trail all the way around so you can just, whatever the wind direction is, you can get there really quietly. Yep. And what I would strongly suggest you do is, you know, if it's a west wind, you're coming in this way. Oh yeah, that's all I usually do. A key to any hunting improvement plan needs to be the consideration of how hunters are going to approach, hunt, and exit without alerting deer. It does no good to create this big attraction, but every time a hunter's going there, he blows deer out of the area. So, yeah, I mean, this just makes your property super huntable, and even more so once the surrounding fields are harvested. Mm -hmm. Having the best cover in the neighborhood and having the only food once the local crops have been harvested means John's gonna be set for some tremendous hunting opportunities. I'm eager to hear of John's progress implementing this plan and I'm confident I'm going to be receiving several grip and grin photos from John and his son once the plan is put in place. We share these details so you can apply these techniques to where you hunt. Even if you don't have permission to alter the habitat where you hunt, Maybe you're hunting public land or a buddy's property. You can still scout for these same situations. Bottlenecks that you can approach, hunt and exit without alerting deer. If you are allowed to alter the habitat, creating food plots of any size is an excellent way to create pinch points. Either deer are attracted to the forage in the plot or they're gonna skirt their edge on the way to their destination. If you enjoy the habitat improvement and hunting techniques we share at Growing Deer, please subscribe to the Growing Deer channel, hit that bell so you'll be notified when we release new content, and make sure and give us a thumbs up. The Growing Deer team is busy assisting landowners almost daily, but if your job keeps you in a different environment, take time to get outside and enjoy creation. But most importantly, take time every day to slow down be quiet and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.